Good afternoon, and welcome back to the Dull Universe, the Inside the Dull Universe series. Last week, I spoke to you about a key artwork in the Salvador Dali collection, the Profile of Time. This week, it has been requested from our Facebook viewers that I speak to you about the, the homage to Terpsichore. The music you were just listening to was Igor Stravinsky's Terpsichore Variations from the 1928 ballet written by Igor Stravinsky with costumes designed by none other than Coco Chanel. The ballet was part of the crucially important ballets produced by the Russian Ballet Company in Paris in the 1920s. And the Apollo Leading the Muses ballet was seen by Salvador Dali. He loved to visit these performances with Gala, his wife. Dali and Gala moved to Paris in 1909 and were very much caught up in the cultural life of the city. And Dali was a close friend of Coco Chanel, who designed costumes. He also knew very well Pablo Picasso, who was an artist of crucial importance, who again made costume designs for the Russian ballet in Paris. And in fact, uh, just as uh, Coco Chanel designed the costumes, so, so did Picasso, and Picasso produced uh, a costume design for the Mercury Ballet, which was uh, written by Eric Satie another key composer, and again, Dali had attended that ballet and seen these wonderful cubist uh, uh, costumes that Picasso had produced. So when Dali saw these balletic performances, he was inspired. He was inspired for three different reasons. One, the movement of the figures themselves. Two, the subject matter that he saw, these performances were drawing on classical antiquity, were drawing on the works of the likes of Ovid and his Metamorphoses. And lastly, he was inspired by the form of the costumes, of course. So what do we have here today to show you? Two figures, almost dancing, a balletic display that could come quite clearly from a scene from a ballet. And in fact, in Stravinsky's Apollo Leading the Muses, in the second tableau, the three muses who Stravinsky dedicates the ballet to, Calliope, Polyhymnia, and Terpsichore, each of the three muses are led by Apollo to Mount Parnassus. What we have here is a representation of Apollo greeting, dancing, and then about to lead Terpsichore, this wonderful golden figure, up to Mount Parnassus. So, Dali was quite clearly influenced by the artistic creations of Pablo Picasso. However, he also is inspired by classical tradition. Just as the subject of Apollo and the Muses is a classical um, subject, he was also inspired by the classical works of a sculptor called Gian Lorenzo Bernini. And as we will see in part five of our series of presentations, the space elephant sculpture, which you will be familiar with, was inspired by Bernini's stunning elephant sculpture in Rome. Another inspirational sculpture by Bernini in Rome is his Apollo and Daphne. So it comes as no surprise when Dali is doing a representation of Apollo and Terpsichore, he's inspired by Bernini's Apollo and Daphne sculpture. This sculpture in the uh, Villa Borghese in Rome is a commission 
from, 19, uh, from 1620 that he produced, the great Baroque artist produced for Scipione Borghese. And in this sculpture, what Bellini does so cleverly is he represents how Daphne is turned by Apollo into a tree. So here we see in this sculpture these forms appearing. She, she becomes branches and leaves and bark. I don't know if you can see in this representation how she's transformed as bark even growing up. So Dali is inspired when he sees the sculpture by, by, by Bellini. And here we see the figure being transformed again. Apollo appears, and when, as we know in the Greek tragedy, when the gods are in contact with the immortals, sorry, the mortals, these changes can happen. So Apollo again meets Terpsico and she is turned into a tree, and we see these forms coming out. So will Dolly pays homage in this sculpture to the Russian ballet in Paris in the 1920s. He pays homage to his compadre, the Spanish artist Pablo Picasso with this surrealist sculptural figure. And he pays homage to Bernini again, who represented so beautifully Greek mythology. And of course, Salvador Dali himself represents the myths of Greece beautifully as well. This sculpture, like all the sculptures in our collection, appears in the catalogue as well. This is the book that all the Salvador Dali works in three dimensions. Sculptures and objects are featured. So we will see the homage vertical sculpture in this form. Uh, here we are, the original drawing, which clearly which shows perhaps more clearly the foliage appearing and the sculpture itself. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions, about the sculpt this particular sculpture or any of the sculptures in our collection, please keep in contact with us via our Facebook and website. Thank you. Have a good day.